Okay, this uh, is the Strand Lighting VL64 console that we're going to be playing with today. Um, although this console has a whole bunch of features that many other consoles don't have, uh, the same thing applies to the, to the whole uh, palette range right across from the bottom to the top. Some people might have the uh, palette basic which is essentially just this section of the console here with um, one go button and uh, about 16 submasters and control interface here. Some people might have a, uh, a classic which has 32 submasters and two go buttons. Um, this one obviously has 64 submasters and there's lots of various different combinations of things that you can play with. The light palette is the same kind of thing but it has buttons in slightly different places so uh, much of the buttons that I'm pointing at here will be in a slightly different location on the light palette but uh, they'll still be there in some form or fashion. So the very first thing that you're going to want to know about is powering up the console. Conveniently across the entire range there is a button that is down the front uh, of the console that you hit and it will power up. What will happen then is that the uh, Windows XP computer that's inside here will boot up. Same as uh, every other Windows XP computer, it'll take about a minute and a half to get up and uh, it will launch straight into the Windows software and on your screen you'll see a display something like uh, what is written here. Now uh, your display when it comes up, uh, a couple of key things to just understand about what we're looking at with this particular display, we're going to see all of our different uh, fixture levels in this section here. Uh, these four large uh, bubbles down here give you an indication of, of what you're currently doing. So in this particular instance it's talking about what cues are coming and things like that. Obviously I haven't got any cues recorded but if I grab a moving light this will tell me what parameters are on each of the four encoder wheels. Uh, below that in this grey section here is the command line. Now you're going to be spending a lot of time looking at this part of the screen because just about everything you do is going to be captured on that um, line at some point. Directly below that is the soft keys. You'll notice that there's stuff written on this uh, bottom row here which uh, you probably can't read on your screen on your television but uh, uh, I can see exactly what the functions are that, that happen on each of those buttons. Directly above that are a bunch of empty buttons which is just yet another uh, range of soft keys. Now all of those soft keys on the uh, screen are replicated back on the hardware here. Uh, on this particular console I've got this group of buttons here which are the, the soft keys S1 through 12 and uh, because I happen to have a, an alt key here that then gives me the ability to reach the other 12 bubbles, uh, the, what we uh, typically call the M keys or the alt S keys. Uh, for the other um, uh, functions. If you have a palette, uh, a silver palette that only has a, a shift button down here, then what the guys at, at Strand have done is they've repurposed these 12 um, buttons up here to be the other soft keys. So in your console you would have uh, S1 here and, and M1 up there. Okay. Uh, on the light palette you've got conveniently arranged 24 buttons that are in the same format as you see on the screen. On the screen down here is, is uh, an information window which uh, carries all sorts of interesting information as, and you'll see it change dynamically as we go through um, this session and, and what individual fixtures can do and what the current tool is that is selected and, and things like that. You'll, you'll understand more about that as we move through the system. Uh, also on my screen at the moment I've got 64 of these buttons up the top here. Um, they refer to the submasters that we have on our console because I've got a 64 submaster console, I've got 64 boxes. They also act as a virtual submaster as well and uh, it just so happens I've got um, that fader there controlling the house lights in the room I'm in at the moment. Um, or I can run it on the, the, um, the, uh, the hardware um, console interface. It does exactly the same thing, fading that, that fader up and down there. So uh, from there we have uh, another little hidden bar that's right up the top here. You'll see that pop up when I move my cursor right up the top and that's where you get to the initial kind of things like uh, saving the show and starting a new show and importing and exporting shows. 
changing um, the display that you're looking at and, and uh, turning things like the moving light attributes window on. So, you know, if I had moving lights, they'd be shown in there. I could turn on the any effects that happen to be running. I could put them in there. Uh, and then just jumping to different parts of the console. So at the moment I'm looking at queue lists on the window at the moment, but I can go in and have a look at what's happening in this other area called looks, and we'll find out more about that later. Then there's the patch, and again we'll find out more about that a bit later. And then there's other functions, specialist functions, like being able to trigger things at certain times, and uh, being able to sort of do sneaky things like macros and uh, sending program control to various different parts of this console and outside of this console. So when you first boot up the console and you go file new, I'm just going to clear what we're looking at here and go file new and start a whole new show. What will happen is that you will start with um, a very basic setup and uh, you will immediately be able to control the first hundred channels uh, straight away one to one. So you can just immediately go and grab the first hundred channels and bring them up to full if you really, really want to.